now, the greatest radio shows of all time. Suspense. The Shadow Node. Washington calling David Harding, counter spy. Classic radio theater. The Great Gildersleeve. Fibber McGee and Molly. Dragnet. Gunsmoke. The Lone Ranger. Now, step back into our time machine with your host, Wyatt Cox. Good evening, friends of the Inner Sanctum. Philip Clark stars as Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons. This episode of the show was originally broadcast on April 23, 1952. Isn't it interesting that the Tracer of Lost Persons, most of the cases have to do with murders? And that's what this one is. This is the Mother's Plea murder case. Presenting Mr. Keen, Tracer of Lost Persons in The Mother's Plea Murder Case. Ladies and gentlemen, once again we present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, one of the most famous characters of American fiction in one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight, the famous old investigator takes from his files and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Mother's Plea Murder. Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons in The Mother's Plea Murder Case. Our scene opens as a middle-aged woman, obviously under great tension and deeply troubled, enters the elevator of an apartment house in New York and asks the question whose answer plunges her into a frightful sequence of horror and murder. I, uh, I want to go to Miss Shirley Spears' apartment. Oh, it's the third floor, ma'am. It's a funny thing. When you came in, I thought I knew you. Or maybe you visit in the building often. I, I've never been here before. That's Miss Spears' apartment right there. Thank you. Yes? Are you Miss Shirley Spears? Yes, but I'm Mrs. Gilbert Gray. Mrs. Gilbert Gray? Come in. Well, what do you want with me? Miss Spears, I threw away pride, self-respect, all the things I value to come here and plead with you for the sake of my children and my home. Okay, you did. So what? This morning, my husband Gilbert asked me for a divorce so he could marry you. I told him that was the only way he could get me. I've got some pride of my own. You're young and attractive. I can't believe you're in love with my husband. Maybe we both love him for the same reason, Mrs. Gray. What? To slice it cold, I mean dollars. I love him because he's my husband. Because he's the father of my children who adore him. Oh, don't make me cry. It ruins my makeup. If it's money you want, I'll give you everything I have. How much is that? Twenty thousand dollars. <laughs> Twenty thousand against his cool million? Don't make me laugh. You're cheap and vulgar and horrible. Ah! Uh... Oh, she, she's dead. I gotta get out of here without being seen. But how? How? I've come to you in desperation, Mr. Keene. You're the only person I could think of to help me. My name is Mrs. Gilbert Gray. Sit down, Mrs. Gray. Now, this is my partner, Mike Clancy. Pleased to meet you. Mr. Keene. I came about the murder of a girl named Shirley Spears. Shirley Spears? Mr. Keene, sir, I, I just finished reading about that murder in the paper. You did, Mike? Well, the police are scouring the town for a woman the elevator lad at the apartment gave them a description of. He says he took her up, but she never came down again. I'm that woman, Mr. Clancy. Saints preserve us. Mrs. Gray, were you in the murdered girl's apartment when she was killed? Yes. I escaped through the back service stairs. Mr. Keene, you've got to help me. Mrs. Gray, I must ask you the direct question. Did you murder the girl, Shirley Spears? I'm a religious woman, Mr. Keene. I'll put my hand on the Bible and swear that I didn't. She deserved being killed if a creature ever did, but... To help you, I must know all the details. 
What was the purpose of your visit to Shirley Spears? Oh, Mr. Keene, don't ask me to tell you that. Well, then I can't take the case, Mrs. Gray. A tigress fights for her cubs, Mr. Keene. Her mother fights for her children. Yes? I was pleading with her and begging her. I offered her every penny I have to let my husband alone. I see. She laughed at me. And just then a shot rang out. And she fell dead before me. I knew then that I had to get out of that woman's place, so be caught there and accused of murdering her. Uh, Boss. Now let Mrs. Gray go on, Mike. The evidence she presents against herself is so black, it seems only an innocent person telling the truth would present it. Then you will help me, Mr. Key. Yes, provided you promise to do exactly what I tell you. You must surrender yourself to the police immediately, Mrs. Gray. Uh, To the police? And be as frank with them as you've been with me. You made a grave mistake leaving the murder scene. But, Mr. Keene... It's good advice Mr. Keene has given. What? Now, if your case goes before a judge and jury, evidence of attempting to escape will well, go bad with you. Before a judge and jury? Mrs. Gray, has your husband sufficient means to furnish bail if the police arrest you? The last words she said were $20,000 against his cool million. Is your husband Gilbert Gray the wealthy lumberman? Yes, Mr. Keene. And a finer husband and father never lived until he met that girl. Mrs. Gray, you mentioned the murdered girl's last words. Tell me, what led up to them? I would told her I couldn't believe a young girl like her could love Gilbert. And that I loved him as my husband and the father of my children. Yes? And she said something about maybe we both loved him for the same reason. His dollars. It was horrible. Here's the address of the police station, Mrs. Gray. The sooner you arrive there, the better. I'm in your hands, Mr. Keene. Mike Clancy and I will call on your husband and arrange for your bail. You are Mr. Gilbert Gray? Yes. My name is Keene, and this is my partner, Mike Clancy. Mr. Keene, Mr. Clancy, come in. Well, Mr. Keene... I just received a phone call from my wife that, thanks to you, the police are holding her for murder. I demand an explanation. Your wife came to me for help, Mr. Gray. So you threw her into jail. Strange way to help her, I must say. Besides, she doesn't need your help. Well, maybe it's you yourself that needs help. And why so, Mr. Clancy? My wife, in a jealous rage, killed a young woman who was employed in my office. Mr. Gray... You seem as firmly convinced that your wife is guilty of murder as I'm convinced she's not. Mr. Keene, I realize the position she's in. And I will get her out myself. I know exactly how to do it, and very quickly. How, Mr. Gray? By confessing you are the murderer? What's that? As I understand the situation, you asked your wife for a divorce so you could marry the murdered Shirley Spears. Did my wife tell you that? Yes. And she also informed me that the fatal shot was fired almost the instant the murdered girl made the statement that the only reason she was attempting to break up your home and marry you was, as she put it, for your dollars. What? If you were concealed in the apartment and overheard that statement... I wasn't in Shirley Spears' apartment when my wife was there, Mr. Keene. So I didn't overhear anything. And I didn't kill her. The police will undoubtedly bring up that possibility, Mr. Gray. I've drawn no conclusions myself. Mr. Keene, I'm sure you rate me among the lowest of the low. And I am. My wife is the most wonderful woman in the world. And few men have children like us. I must have been out of my mind to involve myself with a girl like Shirley. Remorse often comes too late, long after the harm is done. Mr. Keene, I want you to investigate this case for my wife and myself jointly. I work with the police, Mr. Gray. And my investigation is solely in the interest of your wife. But, Mr. Keene... I will do everything in my power to prove her innocence. But to accomplish that, I'll have to prove someone else guilty. I... Hello? Uh, yes, yes, he's here. It's for you, Mr. Keene, uh, a Lieutenant Hale of the police. No, thank you, Mr. Gray. Hello, Lieutenant Hale. You have... That's very interesting. We'll be there at once. Goodbye. Mr. Keene, have the police found anything else against my wife? I fear so. The elevator boy at the murder building has positively identified Mrs. Gray. 
I suggest you accompany Mike Clancy and me to the police station. Our car is outside. How do you do, Lieutenant Hale? Glad to see you, Mr. Keene. Thanks for turning in Mrs. Gray to us, the Spear Girl's killer. Hello, Mike. How do you do, Lieutenant? Lieutenant Hale, uh, this is Mrs. Gray's husband, Mr. Gilbert Gray. Your wife spoke something about bail, Mr. Gray. I have my checkbook with me. We're holding her without bail. We've got an open and shut case. I'll call my attorneys. Uh, Wait, Mr. Gray. Lieutenant Hale, where is the elevator boy who identified Mrs. Gray? In the next room, Mr. Keene. His name is Tom Emmett. Tom, this is Mr. Keene. The the famous investigator? It's swell to meet you. Tell me, do you positively identify Mrs. Gray as the murderess of Shirley Spears? Well, not as the murderess, Mr. Keene. But I took her up to Miss Spears' apartment, and, and she must have killed her because she made a getaway down the service stairs. Do you know this gentleman, Tom? Oh, sure. He was Miss Spears' boyfriend. Pretty old for that kind of work, to my way of thinking. I, uh, I, I don't know his name, though. My name is Gilbert Gray. Mrs. Gray's husband. What do you know? Always wondered why you kept your name in the dark. Tell me, Tom, was Mr. Gray in the murdered girl's apartment today? Uh, Not today, Mr. Keene. Of course I wasn't. I've got other things to tell you, Mr. Keene. And I have other questions to ask you, Tom. Uh, Perhaps you'll excuse us, Mr. Gray. Certainly. Now that we're alone, Tom, you may talk freely. Now, what else have you to tell me? I, uh... I want to give you this $50 bill, Mr. Keene. I see. Does it relate to the murder? I don't know, but... But I got it from Miss Spears' sugar daddy. You mean from Mr. Gray? Sure. He gave it to me to say he wasn't near Miss Spears' flat today, if, if the police questioned me. Was he there near the murder time, Tom? Yeah, he got there about an hour before his missus did. And I didn't take him down in the elevator, either. Say, uh... Say, do you think maybe he did the shooting? Mrs. Gray looks like a pretty nice woman to me. Now, may I keep this bill, Tom? I'll give you a receipt for it. Oh, I don't need any receipts from you, Mr. Keene. I'll return it to you at the proper time. Uh, you'll testify to what you told me in court? Yes, Mr. Keene. You can depend on me. Then I shall see you later, Tom. Uh, Lieutenant Hale. Yes, Mr. Keene. Will you be kind enough to have this $50 bill fingerprinted? Of course. But what's it all about? In my opinion, it's positive evidence that Mrs. Gray did not murder Shirley Spears. You don't change your mind often, Mr. Keene. And you turned her in. I turned her in because I knew she wasn't guilty, Lieutenant Hale. And I promised to deliver the actual murderer to you within the week. I'll release Mrs. Gray, then, on your word. Good. And send her to my office, please. Okay. But speaking of your office... Mike Clancy took a call from there saying Mrs. Gray's son, Jack, was there wanting to see you. Mike and I will hurry down there now. Goodbye, and thanks, Lieutenant. Mr. Keene will return in just a moment in The Mother's Plea Murder Case. But first... April 23rd, 1952, Mr. Keene Tracer of Lost Persons on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Hi, this is Kyle Horvath with the White Pine County Tourism and Recreation Board. If you want to get away from the big cities and get back to nature this summer, give us a call at 775-289-3720 or visit us online at elynevada.net. There's so much to do and see, I can't mention it in 30 seconds. But check out our website and you'll see what Nevada is really all about. elynevada.net or follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Give us a call at 775-289-3720 or visit us online at elynevada.net. Let's see, if something costs less, but people are happier with it, that sounds like something to look into, and that's MediShare. Maybe you've heard switching to MediShare to pay for health care can save the typical family 500 bucks a month, and that's huge. But it's also true that people are way more satisfied after making the switch, too. The customer satisfaction rate for MediShare is double that of the typical health insurance plan. Double. MediShare works. It's been around for more than a quarter century, and members have shared more than $3 billion of each other's bills. People love having telehealth and a huge nationwide PPO network. So, yeah, you can save a ton and like it better. 
Imagine being happy with how you're taking care of your health care. So if you're self-employed or part of the gig economy or you just want a plan you're happy with, you can call right now and get a price within two minutes. A very, very smart use of two minutes. Here's the number you need. 833-34-BIBLE. That's 833-34-BIBLE. 833-34-BIBLE. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt talks more of Mr. Keen Tracer of Lost Persons, April 23rd, 1952. Now back to Mr. Keen and the Mother's Plea Murder Case. Mrs. Agnes Gray, the wife of a millionaire lumberman, has come to Mr. Keen begging him to save her from a murder charge. When her husband, Gilbert Gray, asked her for a divorce so that he could marry Shirley Spears, his young secretary, Mrs. Gray had gone to Shirley's apartment to plead with her. During their quarrel, Shirley was shot to death. But Mrs. Gray insists she was not the murderer. Mr. Keene has learned from the elevator boy, Tom Emmett, that Mr. Gray had given him a $50 bill as a bribe to conceal the fact that Gray was also at Shirley Spears' apartment near the time of the murder. Now Mr. Keene and Mike are returning to their office, where Mrs. Gray's young son, Jack, is waiting to see them. And Mike is saying, Mr. Keene, sir, look through the glass. It seems Mrs. Gray beat us to the office. She's inside talking to a young lad. No doubt it's her son, Jack. I'll open the door, Mike. Oh, Mr. Keene. I knew you'd have me released from that jail. Uh, Mrs. Gray, I assume this is your son, Jack? Yes, Mr. Keene. The pride of my life. But it's the first time he's ever held back on telling his mother what he's up to. I can't get it out of him. What he's doing here... Mother, I came to tell Mr. Keene that neither you nor Dad murdered Shirley Spears. I killed him, Mr. Keene. I'm the murderer. No, Jack. Mr. Keene, Mr. Clancy, don't believe him. And why did you kill a young fella? Because she was pulling your father away from your mother? That's right, Mr. Clancy. And I expect to go scot-free. Her son's got plenty of justification for killing a woman who's breaking up his parents' home. Mr. Keene, Jack is just saying he killed that girl to save me. Calm yourself, Mrs. Gray. Go on, Jack. Mr. Keene, it will hurt my mother to hear it, but I was mixed up with Shirley Spears myself. No, Jack, no. It's true, Mother. What? I was there when you pleaded with her to give up Dad for our sake. And when I heard her laugh at you, I shot her. Arrest me, Mr. Keene. No, arrest me, Mr. Keene. I deceived you. I killed her. <laughs> I'm convinced you didn't, Mrs. Gray. You're attempting to pay the penalty for what may be your son's crime. That's just it, Mr. Keene. Mother sacrificed her whole life for Dad and her children. Jack, how did you gain admittance to the murdered girl's apartment? Why, I rang the bell and went in, that's all. Did you walk up or take the elevator? I took the elevator. Why? Mike. Uh, yes, Mr. Keene, sir. Please phone Tom Emmett, the elevator boy at the murder apartment. Tell him we're bringing up another sp- suspect for him for possible identification. Okay, boss. I'll use the phone in the back office. I came to you for help, Mr. Keene. And you gave me your solemn promise. So I did, Mrs. Gray. The only help I ask of you now is to charge me with murder. I won't have my son pay for my crime. What a wife and mother you are. <laughs> Few like you in the world today. Oh, Mr. Kane, sir. Uh, The elevator lad says that he'll be there another hour. Thank you, Mike. We'll drive Jack out there. Mr. Keene, I'm going back to the police station and confess to that girl's murder. Mother! Mother! I'll bring her back, Mr. Keene. You're not so fast, me bucko. You're going with Mr. Keene and me to be identified. I don't have to be identified, Mr. Clancy. I've already confessed. Isn't that enough, Mr. Keene? The stronger the case against you, Jack, the better for your mother. If the elevator boy identifies you, I'm certain the police will pay no attention to your mother's confession. In other words, she'll be released. That's saying it all, Mr. Keene, sir. Hello, Mr. Keene speaking. Mr. Keene, this is Gilbert Gray. Oh, yes, Mr. Gray. Are you speaking from your home? Yes. My daughter, Vera, is very anxious to talk to you. She's in a high state of excitement. Indeed? Vera claims, and I believe her, that her fiancé murdered Shirley Spears. Your daughter Vera's fiancé killed the woman you were involved with and wanted to divorce your wife to marry? It does sound unreasonable, but it's a fact. The chap's name is Lionel Curtis, and he's here now. What was his motive? He had a prime motive, Mr. Keene. 
while he was ardently courting my daughter, he was actually using that as a blind. As a blind? Why? Because he knew my regrettable connection with Shirley and wanted to throw me off the track. He himself was infatuated with her. And when Shirley told him our plans, he murdered her. While your wife was pleading with her to give you up, Mr. Gray? Yes, Mr. Keene. My daughter saw him going in the apartment house where Shirley lived a matter of minutes before the murder. Mr. Gray, your wife has already confessed the murder. What? But I think she did it to save you. Does that mean you want me to confess to save her, Mr. Keene? No. Your son, Jack, has confessed the crime. I tell you, the murderer is my daughter Vera's fiancé, Lionel Curtis. The case rests on identifications. Whose, Mr. Keene? I'll ask the police to escort you to the murder apartment with your daughter's fiancé. And I refuse to go there, Keene. I'll spend a million to get my wife and son out of this mess, but I won't go to that place. I think the police will persuade you, Mr. Gray. Goodbye. Mr. Keene, sir, I heard it all on this extension. And if I ever listen to a cock and bull story, that's it. You and Jack Gray go to the car, Mike, while I acquaint Lieutenant Hale with my plans. I'll join you in a moment. Okay, boss. Come on, Jack. Yes, Mr. Clancy. Oh, Mr. Keene, there's that elevator boy, Tom Emmett, waiting at the door for us. And so I notice, Mike. Uh, Tom? Oh, uh, hello, Mr. Keene. Tom, look carefully at this young man and tell me... Did you take him to the murdered girl's apartment in the elevator this morning? That's funny, Mr. Keene. I did. Just before I took Mrs. Gray up. And it gets more complicated. April 23rd, 1952, Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. No offense, but are you a little fat when you look in the mirror? How would you like to learn the secrets to lose three to five pounds a week easily? without joining the gym or going through any crazy diets. It's called Body Sculpt by Med Diet. For the last two decades, we've been helping people just like you that have pounds they want to shed. We've helped millions of people lose thousands and thousands of pounds over the years. And now it's your turn. Learn the secrets of how to lose weight with one simple phone call. You'll see an amazing difference in a matter of days. Don't believe us. We'll offer you a money-back guarantee. If you're ready to start losing weight right now, call right now to learn more about your risk-free order to Body Sculpt. Call for your risk-free offer. 800-738-5332. 800-738-5332. That's 800-738-5332. Are you in bad pain? You know what I mean. Your knees hurt. Your shoulder hurts. Your elbow and back are constantly killing you. And I'm sure you've tried every pain pill or cream available at the drugstore. Am I right? Well, here's something you haven't tried. Pain Magic. Pain Magic is not available at any drugstore. The only place you can get it is by calling the special toll-free number I'm about to give you. And to make things even better, call right now and find out about our buy one, get one free offer. We're so confident it'll work for you that we offer a free bottle with your purchase. No prescription required. Call now to learn how you can get pain magic and get rid of your pain. Remember, your results may vary. 800-492-8164. 800-492-8164. That's 800-492-8164. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the conclusion of Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, from April 23rd, 1952. Well, Jack, I confess I didn't believe you were on the murder scene. I told you I was there, Mr. Keene. Mr. Keene, is is this the guy that bumped off Miss Spears? It may be, Tom, but I'm expecting the police with other suspects for you to identify. More, Mr. Keene? Oh, will I be a big shot when it comes out in the papers I was working with you... Excuse me if I pop a button off my vest. Oh, Mr. Keene, sir, it's Lieutenant Hale. 
And he's got Mr. Gray and his wife. And that young fellow, I guess, with him is, is Lionel Curtis. Good afternoon, Lieutenant Hale. It's always gratifying to work with you. And with you, Mr. Keene. Although I'm not entirely in agreement that your client, Mrs. Gray, isn't our killer. I confess to the murder, Mr. Keene. But I'm grateful to you for trying to save me. Mrs. Gray, you confessed to murder you didn't commit. To save your husband and your son, Jack. That's what I've been telling Mr. Keene, Mother. When Dad told me that the police were holding you, I, I couldn't take it. I had to own up. Oh, son. <laughs> Mr. Keene. Yes, Mr. Gray? Neither my wife nor my son, Jack, murdered Shirley Spears. Here's the killer, Lionel Curtis. Mr. Keene, this old two-timer is lying his head off. The question is, can you prove he is, Lionel? Well, I was ten miles away from here when Shirley was shot. Can you prove that? Why, well, I don't know. Tell me, Mitch. Yes, Mr. Keene? Can you identify this man as going to the murdered girl's apartment shortly before she was killed? I can and I do. Say, do you think he killed her? I'm getting all mixed up. You've already identified Mrs. Gray as a visitor, Tom. Yes, sir, but I don't think she done it. And you gave evidence that Mr. Gray, her husband, gave you this $50 bill to say he wasn't in the murder apartment. That's right, Mr. Keene. I wasn't taking no payoff to life to, to keep a guy from getting a murder rap. Mr. Keene, I never gave this boy $50. I wasn't near Shirley's apartment today. I, I, I swear I wasn't. Lieutenant Hale had your movements traced, Mr. Gray. What? And he discovered you were not. Is that correct, Lieutenant? Mr. Gray wasn't here. Neither was his son, Jack, Mr. Keene. Only Mrs. Gray was. I'll let you make the arrest, Lieutenant Hale. Right. I arrest the person you told me you suspected, Mr. Keene. This elevator man, Tom Emmett. You're talking through your hat, copper. When you tried tricks on Mr. Keene, you put yourself in the electric chair, Emmett. How'd you get me, Keene? The police unearthed the fact that you, Tom, were the real lover of Shirley Spears. Yeah, uh, I was until this old goat Gilbert Gray came along. Then she ditched me. You, Tom, identified three people as being on the scene whom the police proved were not. And you gave me this $50 bill as coming from Mrs. Gray's husband. And that made me suspect you in the beginning. Why? It seemed unreasonable a man of Mr. Gray's intelligence would take a chance like that on an elevator boy. I had the bill fingerprinted by the police. Mr. Gray's prints were not on it. But yours were, Tom Emmett. It was all quite simple. Mr. Keene, you saved me and my husband and my home. The good God in heaven will reward you. Your gratitude is the most valued reward I can hope for, Mrs. Gray. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the mother's plea murder case. Listen again next week to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Frank Hummer, directed by Richard Leonard. Philip Clark plays Mr. Keene. Your announcer, Jack Costello. Remember, Mr. Keene is on the air at this same time every Thursday at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old tracer turns to the Apple Orchard murder case. April 23rd, 1948, Mr. Keene, tracer of lost persons on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Are you suffering with arthritis or osteoporosis? Do you have diabetes? Did you know that these are just two of the hundreds of diseases that have seen improvement with Dr. Wallach's incredible longevity products? You can't get them at a health food store. The only way to get them is to call us at 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. Do you have heart disease, fibromyalgia, or high blood pressure? Do you have a terrible time losing weight? 
Dr. Wallach can help. He was a veterinarian and cured diseases in animals. He felt that he could do the same for humans, so he became a physician. Over 50 years of research and helping people like you goes into every bottle of Dr. Wallach's amazing discoveries. Do you want to feel better? Learn how to treat the cause of your problem rather than covering up the symptoms with drugs. Call 800-214-0065. That's 800-214-0065. A word about Mr. Keen, tracer of lost persons, Bennett Kilpack, originating the role of Mr. Keen. Later on in the role, Philip Clark would uh, complete the series to its conclusion. It ran from 1937 until 1955. Now on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox, the soap opera Claudia, April 23rd, 1948. And now, Claudia. Dum, 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 bum, 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 la, 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 Claudia. La, la, la. Claudia. Hmm? Have you any idea what time it is? Certainly I have. Well, you wouldn't know it the way you're sitting around reading that mail order catalog. I'm not reading it. I'm dreaming of the new handyman we're about to hire. Well, I'm sure he won't be a dream handyman, so you'd better watch the clock instead. I can tell you practically exactly what time it is without even looking at the clock. (laughs) I dare you. You see, Mama, when the shadow of that maple tree reaches all the way down the driveway, it's 5.30. Well, my mouth droppeth open. Now, what do you think of your daughter? You should have been a sailor. Maybe we should have been sailors. Doesn't look like we're very good farmers, so maybe we should have been sailors. Why? What's the matter with you and David as farmers? Because we have to hire a farmer to farm our farm. Oh, That's not so why. fast. Now, wait a second. You, you haven't hired him yet. No, but we're just about to. You hope? Mama, we are going to take Peter Listrom no matter what. It's the nearest thing we've come to a farmer within weeks. Well, Claudia, don't expect too much of him. The carpenter told you Peter wasn't really a farmer. Well, that's because he's the carpenter's brother-in-law. You know how it is with in-laws. Oh, I just can't wait to meet him. David's going to be so pleased. Well, don't count your farmers before they're hatched, Claudia. I'm not counting him. I'm counting on him. (laughs) What time did he say he'd be here? Half past six. Half past six. And David is going to be here three minutes after six. Do you remember? Now, Mama, don't rush me. Takes me exactly 15 minutes to get to the station from here. If I leave at quarter of six... I'd rather you'd left at 20 minutes to six and took 20 minutes to get there. Don't worry. You don't think I'd be late to meet a train David's on, do you? And David would certainly appreciate it if you got there all in one piece. Mama, what do you think Peter Listrom's going to be like? Can't you wait and see? Oh, I wish we didn't have to wait. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. David will be so pleased. We're going to be able to start hoeing the fields and planting the... Say, what are we going to plant? You go plant your two feet in that car of yours and get on your way. Oh, all right. You want to come along? I do not. You mean you don't want to come down to the station and meet your one and only (laughs) son-in-law? I'll keep the home fires burning, thank you. The less I drive with you at the wheel, the happier I am and the older I'll grow. I know you. You think you'll be in the way. Well, if if you insist, I, I do get rather embarrassed watching the way you two carry on. All right, Mommy, you stay here. And if Peter Listrom comes, hang on to him, please. Yoo-hoo, David! Yoo-hoo! David, here I am. I can't whistle. I just had some chocolate. Well, well, Mrs. Norton. Fancy meeting you here. Hello, David. Made it to the station all right? No flat tires, no accidents? I just got into the car and said, to the station car. It drove here all by itself. <laughs> no wonder you're safe and sound. You haven't kissed me? Here? At the station? In front of all the... Well, all the other wives are kissing all their other husbands. And then you kiss all your other husbands, too. You're all my other husbands. For the time being. Hello. Hello. Now, come on, get into the car. I'm in a hurry to get home and shower. You get in the other side. You're tired, darling. I'll drive. I'm not that tired. Why wait until you are that tired? Go on, darling. Slide over. What's the matter? My driving not good enough for you? No, not half good enough. But it's good enough for me. I mean, you let me drive here all the way to the station to get you. Well, you drive one way, I drive the other. It's only fair. Someday you'll learn. Someday. Maybe I won't care so much how much we break our necks. Don't say that. All right, I'm sliding over. Good girl. 
David, what would you like to do most all weekend? Mm, I'd like to forget all about architecture and get that blasted farm of ours going. You would? But I don't know where to begin. It's a cinch I can't do it all by myself. It's a cinch you can't. Once the place is going, well, one man will be able to handle it. But right now, there's too much to be done. Mm, there certainly is. The fields are in terrible condition. Mm -hmm. We won't be able to raise vegetables this summer if we don't get going soon. It, it's practically May. It's practically May, isn't it? So it is, so it is. Oh, darling, I took your khaki trousers out this afternoon. They are your farming trousers, aren't they? Well, they won't get worn out very quickly. But hoeing a field must be very hard on trousers. Hoeing a field mentally won't even put a callus on my brain. <laughs> Not even yours. But hoeing a field with your hands will put calluses on them, won't it? I'd love to see them on mine. I wonder if you'll be saying that tomorrow night. What? Look, darling, what is this all about? Can't you guess? You have... You haven't hired a... a farmer. But I have! Except that I haven't met him yet. You haven't... what? David, his name is Peter Listrom, and he's a brother-in-law of our carpenter, and he's at the house waiting for us. At least I hope he is. Is he a farmer? Mm, no, but he's willing to help. Well... Well, that's a beginning. The carpenter says he has a very strong back. Mm, that'll come in handy. Maybe that's why he's called a handyman. Anyway, he's supposed to be at home now waiting for us. Oh, I just know he's going to work out. How do you know? Well, Peter's such a nice name. I have a feeling he's going to be young and intelligent and capable and an enormous help to you. Mm. I have a feeling that if he just says, Hello, Mr. Norton, I'll think he's the greatest thing that ever walked the earth. Our earth, darling. Our earth. And this weekend you'll be a farmer just like you wished. Come on, David, let's hurry. Yoo-hoo, Mama, we're home. But what took you so long? David drove like a snail. Hello, Mother. Claudia, Claudia, he's here. Yes? Mm -hmm. Mother, it is getting so that if there's anything I ever want, all I have to do is rub Claudia's head and make a wish. <laughs> rub it now. Uh, wait till I see Peter. I put him in the living room. Where else? I'll go right in. Me too. Coming, Mama? I should say not. I'm going to get dinner ready. Make it a big dinner, Mama. Tonight we're really going to eat like farmers. I could eat a whole field. Of nuts? Oh, um, hello, Mr. Listrom, I'm, uh, I'm David Norton. Hello, Mr. Norton. Oh, no. <clears throat> Your brother-in-law told us about you. He did, huh? He's married to my sister. Well, that's nice, isn't it? I, uh, I understand that you have some extra time and... Got plenty of time. Got plenty of time. Uh, and that you'd like to do some work for me. Well, depends on the work. Don't like to use up all my time working, huh? No, no. That makes sense, doesn't it, David? <laughs> yes, great. What kind of work is it, Mr., uh, Mr., uh, huh? Well, it's, uh, it's outside work. It's a, it's a beautiful field. It's even got some stones in it. <clears throat> Be quiet. Uh, I, um, I just want to get a few small patches cleaned up for some spring planting. Outside work, huh? The sun's hot. Well, it may rain. Rain's cold. I don't like to get my feet wet. Might catch cold. You see, David, that's what I always say to you. Well, we'll start slowly, Mr. Listrom. I like everything slowly. Always take it nice and easy and slow. Is, is, is your name really Peter, Mr. Listrom? It's what they call me. You and your feelings. Are you, um, are you interested, Mr. Listrom? Well... Got to think about it. Got to think about it. <laughs> we can't give you too long to think about it. I was planning to start on it tomorrow morning. Oh, it won't take me till tomorrow morning. Never think that much. I'll just stand here and look out the window and do my thinking. Fine. Fine. You go right ahead. Claudia, come over here. David, do you think he'll be terribly expensive? Whatever he charges, he won't be worth it. But do you think he'll charge a lot? Probably, and I probably won't want to pay it. Oh, for once, Mrs. Norton, a man called Peter is not 
tall, dark, and handsome. But he's very tall and very dark. So maybe that makes up for the intelligence. David, do you think he'll take the job? Mm, no. He's still thinking. On him, that's a bad sign. Maybe he just looks and acts and sounds dumb. Maybe, but what else is there? Mm, that's true. I think I'll just tell him to forget all about it. Uh, Mr., uh, well, I've done my thinking. Mm, you feeling all right? Well, I feel fine, huh? Well, that's good. My uh, brother-in-law, he's married to my sister. Yes. Uh, he told me you're the kind of a guy who fixes up houses. Yes, I, I'm an architect, if that's what you mean. Huh? <laughs> yes, I fix up houses. And I'm the kind of a fellow who fixes up fields. Fix them up fine. Make the furrows nice and smooth and long and even. So I've been thinking. So you said. I've been thinking if I fix up your fields and you fix up my house, we could get along fine. Uh, me uh, fix up your house? Yeah, the roof fell in last week and the porch is all kind of caved in. But if you'll fix up my house and I'll fix up your fields, we can call it square. You mean you'll... You'll... You'll come tomorrow? What's the matter? Don't you follow my thinking? Well, I follow it, Mr. Listrom, and I I think you're generous. I <laughs> I think you're brilliant. Oh, now, now, Mr. O. I'm the dumbest one of 11 sons my mother had, and folks say I ain't smart enough to breathe, but, well, kind of a way. <laughs> maybe you're right. Maybe I am brilliant. Well, then I'll be seeing you. I'll be over about six o'clock, huh? Oh. Yes, and uh, I'll get started on your house the first thing in the morning. Well, I'll be fine, Mr. Uh, Mr. Well, we'll be fine. Well, good night, huh? <laughs> good, good night. Good night. Hmm. David, just think tomorrow you can start hoeing that field after all. Tomorrow? No, I'm, a, I'm afraid there's no such luck, darling. What do you mean? That Peter... He was much too smart for me. Tomorrow, while Peter is hoeing my field, I'll be redesigning his house. I guess I'm destined to be just an architect after all. Do 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 dum dum. When you see pictures of young people's parties in the papers and magazines, there's one thing you can almost always see well up in front, and that's Coca-Cola. Coke has become as much a part of such gatherings as the young folks themselves. If you have teenagers in your household, you'll find it's a good idea to order Coke by the case. Then there's always ready hospitality for guests of all ages. Well, Mr. King, looks like I took the job, down it, huh? <laughs> looks like David took a job, too. Sure I'm glad I'm going to get my house fixed up, fixed up. sure I am. Yeah, David will do a fine job for you. So I hope yep, you... Yep, the Norton sure got a pretty place here. Got a lot of nice big tall trees. I think some of the trees are a little too big and a little too tall. Never heard before a tree can be too tall or too big. Never did. Oh, maybe not for you, but I think they will be for Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Never heard of him. Who's he? Well, the Shakespeare I'm talking about is Claudius Cat, and on Monday he's going to find out that a tree is a mighty big and tall thing. That's so? Well, I sure do wish a little cat luck... Uh, Call me if you need me. I'll be a whittling on my porch. See you Monday, Peter. Goodbye. As I was saying, every day Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These programs star Catherine Bard as Claudia and Paul Crabtree as David, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. From April 23, 1948, Claudia here on Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. Would you do me a favor? Thank this radio station and support their advertisers. It is their kindness and courtesy that allows us to be with you each and every time we're here 
on your favorite radio station. Would you also do me a favor, and if you miss a day on this station, realize you don't have to miss a single show. You can find all of our shows online at iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Amazon, or Facebook. Just search for Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. That's Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox. And you can visit my webpage, hear the shows there as well, classicradio.stream. There you can also get in touch with me, classicradio.stream. Thanks for tuning in, and tell all your friends the great radio shows are right here at this spot on the dial. Classic Radio Theater with Wyatt Cox on your favorite radio station.